Welcome to this gauge block tutorial. Gauge blocks are often known as the primary standards for dimensional quality control. We use them to calibrate our tools, setup machines, things like that. It's really important that these things are precisely made. They have a great surface finish, wear resistance, and dimensional stability. They're made in ceramic like the ones you see here today. They're made in carbide which have the advantage of being longer wearing and also typically steel. And that's what you're seeing here is a typical steel set. They vary in price quite a bit. You can buy cheap ones. You can buy really, really expensive ones. It really is dependent on what you're using it for. And keeping them uh, in a nice state is really important, especially with steel blocks. This uh, vapor phase inhibitor sheet that's in the top of the box, you should keep there. It helps to keep a little oil over your parts so that they keep their nice steel look here. You don't want to handle steel parts with your hands. Typically use gloves or at very least wash your hands very thoroughly to get any oil and sweat off before you use these blocks. Don't have to worry about that so much with the ceramic blocks though you do need to keep these things looking nice. They come in all different sizes and shapes, rectangular, square, sometimes they're known as Joe blocks after the inventor of these, C.F. Johansson. But they're typically known as gauge blocks. You can get angle blocks, you can get gauge pins. There's all sorts of gauging block-like things. Gauge blocks come in a number of different grades here. And this chart shows you a little bit about them. Typically, if you're using them in a shop, you're going to be using grade 2. If you really, really are the Cal Lab type Place, then you're going to need something a little better, a zero, maybe a one. Uh, these things should be kept up very, very well and keep them in nice shape, keep them in their box, keep them clean, keep them corrosion free, keep them in a dry environment. Uh, you know, anything you can do to keep these things nice. When you go and take them out of the box initially, you should examine them for wear, and I would recommend using them over a table. You can buy these special stones here that will that you can use just to very lightly rub the side just to make sure you have no nicks or burrs and that the thing is clean. You should also clean the faces occasionally with some alcohol, and they should be oiled if they're a steel. You should put a light oil coating on them, but you should remove the oil just before you go and put these things together. We have a set like this, we can find any size block we want out of here and we can marry these things together through a process called ringing. Ringing requires that we push them together very, very tightly to squeeze all the air out between the two parts and then they will stick together as if in magic. To construct a gauge block stack here, Follow this guide. Use as few gauge blocks as possible to obtain the required length by selecting the blocks wherever possible, thick blocks wherever possible. Select the least significant digit first and then work your way back through. And there's a lot of combinations you can do to put together a specific size. With a good size gauge block set, like an 81 uh, block set, you can make just about any size up to about 6 inches or so. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit here uh, in my makeshift lab. We're still under coronavirus threat, so right now we're going to work with this uh, wonderful table I have, which has a glass surface. Inside the kit, first thing you'll see here is a certificate of calibration and traceability. This will tell you how much each gauge block is off, plus or minus. Here's our vapor phase inhibitor sheet. You know, if it feels too dry, you can re-oil it. You could put a little WD-40 on it or so. And then we have our set here. So I'll hold it up here so you can see what's going on. We have blocks as big as 4 inch, 3 inch, 2 inch, 1 inch, and then we have fractional down to a quarter inch. Then we go down all the way to tenths of an inch, hundredths of an inch, and thousandths of an inch pretty complete kit. You can put just about anything together. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to demonstrate a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to pull out some blocks. Uh, a two-inch block, a one-inch block, 
and you can see these here they don't do well in the light of the camera but I'll try to turn it here so you can see it says two inches right on the face and we have a polished surface on either end here's our one inch block Again, it's a little hard to see but there it is one inch and we can hold this up against our two inch block here and you get the sense that it's about half the size now we want to look at these polished surfaces here. We want to make sure that those are always clean. A towel or something like that to keep it clean. And then if we push really hard and twist, and this takes a little practice, you can get these things to stick together. I would recommend not holding it over a shop floor, maybe a carpeted area or over a table. Try to keep it low so if it falls, it doesn't smack. You can also push it up from the side here and it'll stick together just the same. And we could take another part and we can add it on just the same here. Alright, so I'm going to break these down. We're going to try something out here. We're going to bring out some other tooling and we're going to show you something. We're going to take this two inch gauge block here. We're going to set it aside. And we're going to take a one inch block, a three-quarter inch block, 0 0.750, and lastly we're going to take out a quarter inch part, or 0 0.250. You can see them all there. And we're going to stack these together. It might take me a minute to, to put all these together in front of you because it takes a little bit of patience and they don't always stick perfectly the first time, but we're going to give it a good push here. We're going to kind of push it back and forth a little bit, try to squeeze all that air out. All right, and that's on there pretty well now. And without knocking that other one off, we're going to try to get this one inch block stuck on here. Again, it takes a little bit of care, a little patience. It's tough. If you rock it, it doesn't work. you got to get them really flat, and then they will stick. So there we have it. We have a stack there. I'm just centering up that quarter-inch block there a little bit. All right, there we have it. All right, we're going to put all of our stuff aside here. Now in this tight space I'm in, I'm going to attempt to move this monstrously heavy based height gauge into view here. I don't want to step it along my table, but it's heavy. I think I want to do is smash my top. Okay, there we have it. It's a nice single beam height gauge. I also have on it a, uh, a dial indicator so that we can assess how much pressure we're delivering to the part to the surface and I'm going to have to uh, tip that down just a little bit so we can reach the surface. We're going to bring it down to the surface and uh, although you can't see this I'm going to make it so that the dial indicator indicates zero. I had set it a little bit negative and once we get it set correctly. I'm going to zero out the height gauge. I'm going to raise it up. Get ourselves a couple inches up. We're going to take our two inch block here. You can see. Two inch. So that's side to side two inches. We're going to set it up on our makeshift measuring surface here. Now we're going to bring our height gauge down. Get that zero just right on the dial indicator. And there you can see we're showing two inches on our height gauge. All right. Now we're going to bring in the stack made of one inch, three quarter inch, and quarter inch all rung together. We're going to do the same exact thing. Bring it down. We're going to get our indicator to show zero. And there you have it. And you see we are at two inches again. 
So they are very precise. They can be added up very to to any combination to make whatever size you need uh, for outside measurement. You know, this is great for uh, checking the calibration on a caliper, micrometer, uh, height gauge, whatever tooling you have. It's a great way to check out your tooling and ensure that you're measuring things correctly prior to actually making a measurement. All right, last thing is because I was handling these with my hands, and uh, although I made uh, a point of washing my hands prior to doing this, I'm taking a little bit of uh, tissue paper in this case because I'm working out of a home facility and I'm going to wipe down all these blocks prior to putting them back in the kit and not touch them again with my fingers. Just the oils on my fingers will cause the blocks to corrode over time. So if you can make a point of wiping them down and maybe even just putting a light film of oil on them prior to putting them away uh, you can ensure that the blocks will be good for years to come. Now, if you drop them or you damage them in any way, you may have to replace the block and you know you may have to purchase individual blocks at some point for your kit or just buy a new kit. This kit's an economy kit. It costs in the $250 to $300 range. So even at that, it's expensive. So keep these nice and you'll have them for years to come. One last thing, I wanted to show you this little chart about when you're handling these things, you're actually putting heat into the parts. This chart shows how you actually impart heat into the part and it elongates it only in micrometers. So we're talking about a fairly small amount of change here. But if your work has to be very, very, very precise, you may want to set your gauge block stack down for a little while prior to using it to ensure that you have the dimensions that you really think you have. As you can see by this chart here, how you hold it imparts more or less heat into the block and it obviously takes a long time for that heat to come out of the part, especially if you're working in relatively hot conditions. These parts are supposed to be used at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That ensures that the dimensions are accurate. If you work in hotter temperatures, you're going to actually add something to the length of that block. Now, ceramic blocks aren't going to be uh, as susceptible to that as they are with steel blocks. So, something to keep in mind when you're working with these things.